file, and then yesterday I was at work and I was snapping at everybody, and uh, and you just try to come up with something that will help you hold on. And uh, a couple of thoughts have come to mind. If I can articulate them, I'll try. I started thinking about the fact of, first of all, I started thinking about heaven and what heaven's like and what it means. And then my mind started going to what it doesn't mean. Because I'm just trying to imagine what Phyllis is doing at this moment. And you can come up with scenarios that make you feel better, but I was trying to get down to what really is happening. Like I, my imagination takes me to this place where her and dad are sitting at, by the way, there's a flat rock in, in heaven. There's this place called the Flat Rock down in Kentucky that my dad would take me to the fish. Never caught one fish. The best fishing I've ever had in my life, sitting by my dad on the flat rock. There's got to be a flat rock in heaven. So I imagine her and dad sitting at the flat rock, fishing, and the best part is they're not catching anything. They're just talking. And that's my imagination. But then when I start thinking about what heaven is, the first thing I thought is maybe heaven, we think of heaven almost like retirement. Because we think about the things we will no longer have to do. And uh, I don't think that's it. I don't think heaven's retirement. Because I imagine me retiring and, and maybe a day or two into retirement, I wake up and forget that I'm retired and say, I gotta get up for work. No, I don't. I don't have to do anything. I don't think that's heaven. Because I think what you do in heaven, according to the scripture, is it's not about what you stop doing, it's about what you get to start doing. And all of a sudden you're in this place where it's not about earning money. Matter of fact, I never thought about it this way, it just came to me. Money is so unimportant in heaven that they paved the streets with gold. And they built their buildings with gems. Because it doesn't matter, they're worthless. What you do instead of getting up and saying, how am I going to get some gold today? You get up and say, I get to worship the architect of the universe. What a great job to have for the rest of eternity. And then the other thing I've been thinking about is that we say, well, Phyllis died. But she didn't. She just transitioned. Because the Bible clearly says that if we're absent here, we're actually somewhere else. Yes, she really just moved. That's all that happened. And got rid of a really lousy shell that she lived in. I'll never forget, we went down to uh, Gatlinburg, and I don't remember what age I was, but you know how little stupid things stick with you? We went through the Ripley's Believe It or Not Museum, and you remember how he would have these funny gravestones that he would publish in his little articles? A lot of you probably aren't old enough to even know what I'm talking about, but some of you are, I you know. And uh, one of the ones that was there that I stood there and read, and I remember so clearly today, was this guy named Solomon Pease had died, and it said, Solomon Pease, Pease is not here, only the pot. Pease went home to be with God. <laughs> That's what it was. Throw off the shelf, throw off the pod, moved. And um, then, then the last thing that I'm going to say that has given me some comfort, and I shared it with the Seekers class Sunday, um, is you start to read scripture in a whole different way when you're in this situation. I was reading the story, and I don't even know how I stumbled on this, but I was reading the story of when John the Baptist was beheaded. And it was totally unfair. By the way, when I was, I had to tell mom that Phyllis had passed when we were in the car. And when I was driving back, I just turned off the radio and was thinking. And I had said to mom, doesn't it seem unfair? And then it dawned on me on the way home, yes, it is unfair. Why does the older sister get everything good first? <laughs> it's unfair to us, not to her. Uh, so I don't know why I went down that rabbit trail. <laughs> I told you I'd be incoherent. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so, so, uh, Totally unfair, John the Baptist, because he spoke the truth, this Herod's wife, who was just a complete jerk, had his, her daughter dance in front of him. And he said, whatever you want, I'll do. And she says, I want John the Baptist's head on a platter. And that's what he does, because he's an idiot and a wimp. And, and that's what he does. He was afraid. He thought, sure, a ghost would come back and get him. And, but the really core part that blew me away is it says that 
Jesus, when he heard about this, headed to the desert, and people's fo people followed him. And when he saw the people, he had compassion. That's the story. That that's, that's the setup for the feeding of the five thousand. And so I think what I would say is that it is painful to hear this. I believe Jesus, I don't believe Jesus only wept one time where it says he wept. I believe he wept. A dear friend died in an unfair way. And the only way to get through it is to look around on the people that suffer and have compassion. That's what Phyllis would and then the last thing I'll say, and this one is a little less religious. <laughs> um, the day before we found, I uh, went down to the hospital on that Thursday, uh, I've started becoming obsessed with playing the ukulele. So when I'm home, I play it all the time. And, and I'm learning different songs, trying to learn different chords. So I play all these different songs. And one of the songs I just started trying to learn because I have some interesting chords is a song by Carol King called So Far Away. And it's a love song, you know, and it's about, you know, angst about love, and being separated. And boy, it took on a different meaning. Because the, the, the uh, chorus says, you're so far away, doesn't anybody stay in one place anymore? It would be so nice to see your face at my door. I forgot the rest of it. See your face at my door. Doesn't help to know that you're so far away. And it, what we have to remember is, Phyllis is not retired. Phyllis is not gone. Phyllis is not dead. She's just far away. And there will be a day that will be right there with her again. 